So dear devotees, let's read the purport. To be non-violent to human beings and to be a killer or enemy of the poor animals is Satan's philosophy. In this age, there is enmity towards poor animals and therefore the poor creatures are always anxious. The reaction of the poor animals is being forced on human society and therefore there is always the strain of cold or hot war between men individually, collectively, or nationally. At the time of Maharaj Yudhishthir, there were no different nations, although there were different subordinate states. The whole world was united, and the supreme head, being a trained king like Yudhishthir, kept all the inhabitants free from anxiety, diseases, and excessive heat and cold. They were not only economically well-to-do, but also physically fit and undisturbed by supernatural power, by enmity from other living beings, and by disturbance of bodily and mental agonies. There's a proverb in Bengali that a bad king spoils the kingdom and a bad housewife spoils the family. This truth is applicable here also. Because the king was pious and obedient to the Lord and sages, because he was no one's enemy and because he was a recognized agent of the Lord and therefore protected by him, all the citizens under the king's protection were, so to speak, directly protected by the Lord and his authorized agents. Unless one is pious and recognized by the Lord, he cannot make others happy who are under his care. There is full cooperation between man and God and man and nature. And this conscious cooperation between man and God and man and nature, as exemplified by King Yudhishthir, can bring about happiness, peace, and prosperity in the world. The attitude of exploiting one another, the custom of the day, will only bring misery. Om Agyanati Mirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Milita Mienatasme Shri Guruve Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shiva Sadiko Rabhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare so I offer all the assembled Vaishnavas my most humble obeisances and I humbly seek your merciful blessings so that I will be able to do justice to the service that has been given to me today. So we are seeing a very illustrative, very important and very educational verse, which is true of all Srimad Bhagavatam because it's an educational treatise, but especially so for the rulers of today. People want peace, they want prosperity but they don't know the way to go about it. And sometimes even when they are told, they don't like to hear it. I'll give you an example. In New Orleans, I was part of an interfaith climate coalition group. It was the Greater New Orleans Interfaith Climate Coalition. And actually the priest who started this interfaith climate coalition group was talking about environmental damage and so on and so on and what's happening to Mother Earth and as even though we are of different religious bent of mind, we should all unite to save Mother Earth and so on. The thing is, that was actually, I realized much, much later, it was actually a front for black rights. He wanted that justice should be done to his people, the black people, and he wanted all the other interfaith groups to rally around and say climate justice is racial justice, climate justice means uh, environmental mental justice means justice to the black, they should be given rights, etc, etc. And every time I tried to speak about animal rights, they would listen politely, but they couldn't quite get it because they're all meat eaters. And Srila Prabhupada would say, the meat eaters are so dull-headed that they cannot understand spiritual topics. They cannot, because their tongue is so used to eating the flesh of animals. And that is violent food that they're eating. They cannot have compassion for others. 
So this talk about, oh, we have to save Mother Earth, oh, climate change, oh, environmental crisis is at hand, our rivers, our land, our trees, and you know, forests are getting denuded and all, but they do not want to stop the exploitation. Anything but that. So they will point the fingers everywhere else, but they will not look within. They will not turn around and say, what can I do to make that situation better? How can I change my lifestyle? Because a very drastic lifestyle change is called for, right? If you ask a meat eater, give up eating meat, he's going to be like, why? Why should I give up eating meat? What's wrong with eating meat? And then when you explain the consequences of what the meat industry does, then they're shocked. They're uh, you know, taken aback and they say, yeah, yeah, we've got to do something. Oh boy, I don't think I feel so guilty now eating meat. But they go right back to doing the same thing the next day. Why? The tongue, the tongue is so inured to eating the flesh of dead animals and the taste of meat. It's actually like an addiction. They have done research to find just as nicotine is an addiction, meat eating is also an addiction. Hmm? And so it is very difficult to give up these habits unless one has a tremendous impact by a pure devotee. That is why the scriptures speak the glories of the pure devotee of the Lord, because he can lift up the person who is mired in the darkness of ignorance and lift him up to spiritual life. And who has done that for us? Srila Prabhupada and his pure representatives are spiritual masters. Hmm? Guru Krishna Prasadepai Bhakti Lata Beach. So I would make presentations, actually did research and made presentations on what the meat industry is doing. Hmm? I would show that for one acre of land on which farm animals are being grazed in order to you know, promote the flesh industry, that same farmland would feed so many people if corn was grown or if grains were grown and it would save water, it would save the forest, it would save the animals, it would save nature and ultimately us. But were they willing to hear it? Heck no. <laughs> I don't know. Guru Maharaj has also mentioned cowspiracy and he has said how when difficult questions are answered, they don't want to hear it and they actually shut down the whole thing. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to change their lifestyle in spite of being presented with facts and figures to show how damaging it is, they don't want to change. Of course, there's a huge vegan and a vegetarian movement now everywhere all over the world. Even 50 years ago, it wasn't there, but this is Lord Chaitanya's mercy that he is at least, that he is not at least, Lord Chaitanya is doing everything, but at least people are waking up to the realization that what they are doing is actually harming nature. It's actually very uncompassionate, discompassionate, and no religion supports pain and torture to other animals. If you look at the meat industry, how the animals are raised, how they are transported, how they are you know, mercilessly slaughtered, it's enough to you know, shock you into giving up meat. In fact, a very famous beetle, Paul McCartney, who is a vegetarian, by the way, wrote a song saying if slaughterhouses had glass walls everybody would be a vegetarian mm -hmm. but now let's go back to this particular um, uh, purport where it says that the king was so pious why because he was a saintly ruler and because he was a saintly ruler all of nature was also cooperating because when the lord is pleased all of nature is pleased. There's plenty of grains. The earth yields bountiful grains. And not just grains, jewels, minerals, all kinds of valuable things come from Mother Nature. Hmm? But when it, the king is bad, everything is ruined. So because King Yudhishthir was directly under the protection of the Lord, guidance of the Lord, and himself was a very, very great devotee, what happened to Mother Earth? She flourished under the rule of such a wonderful ruler as Yudhishthira. And in such a kingdom, all the creation was protected, not just humans. Every creature was protected. Why? Because the rules of re religious principles were being followed. Dharma was being followed. The king prided himself, not prided in the sense of being proud, but they, it was a matter of honor 
to maintain dharmic principles and to abide by the shastra it was the king had a council of ministers to give him good advice it was not like whimsically autocratically it was not like that the kshatriyas were guided by the brahmanas the brahmins were the council of very wise and learned ministers trained in the different arts of administration and they were there to guide the king to rule the kingdom in a way that was wise compassionate peaceful helpful and progressive what kind of progress not making more and more gadgets and gizmos but progress towards the goal of the human form of life which is to become krishna conscious that is the purpose of the human form of life and the saintly king life yudhishthir never forgets that hmm? this is the evam parampara praptam idam radar shayo vidu ha huh? in the fourth chapter of bhagavad gita let me see if i can pull that up hmm this uh, knowledge was given to all the kings the saintly kings understood it in that way but in course of time this parampara was lost therefore i am speaking this knowledge to you again says krishna hmm? uh, arjuna has just asked him how can i uh, know what you are saying because you know how do i know the sun god vivaswan is senior by birth to you how am i to understand that you instructed this science to him so then krishna explains he says let me go to that next verse which is uh, the one i'm talking uh, oh no i'm sorry i'm jumping ahead <laughs> um yeah in course of time the succession was broken this is verse number 2 sorry no no four two evam padam pada praptam imam radar shayo vidu sa kalena ha mahata yogo nashta parantapa hmm this supreme science was thus received through the chain of disciplic succession and the saintly kings understood it in that way but in course of time the succession was broken and therefore the science as it is appears to be lost and so therefore i'm explaining it again to you krishna uh, arjuna so says krishna hmm? so the saintly kings had a very very important duty and a very great responsibility hmm and because yudhishthir was a saintly king he was called raj rishi he was not an ordinary king he was raj rishi saintly king and that was the culture in those days where anybody who was a miscreant was immediately punished huh he was immediately given due punishment in accordance with the crime today we have all this molly coddling of murderers rapists serial killers oh we should not uh, for you know give them capital punishment we should be compassionate towards them even if they have done all this and so they lived for 15 20 30 40 50 60 years in prison at government's expense the tax payers expense and what is the great use to society on the other hand this person will have to pay a horrendous price in the next lifetime in olden days the person committed murder the king said off with his head and finished that crime was paid for in this present lifetime itself and the person began the next life on a clean slate so to speak but today we molly coddle all these people we molly coddle the criminals the rapists the serial killers what are we doing we are just perpetuating the criminal tendencies you think they are going to be reformed staying in prison no they are sitting there and having a good time living out their life at whose cost tax payers cost so we live in a very lopsided society which is not able to function properly hmm? today justice can be bought for money exploitation has gone to extremes the demons don't care what is happening to mother earth and therefore we are in the situation where we are today there's a great need actually for farm communities this is so important and of course following the rule of law as given according to shastra so it is not enough to say we will not be violent towards men and women and children because they are human humans we have to be non violent towards all of god's creation otherwise we will continue to pay a very heavy price for the violence that we commit to innocent helpless vulnerable dependent creatures will come back to us in the form of wars pestilence hurricanes earthquakes tornadoes forest fires floods droughts hmm? 
endemic, pandemic, you name it. All these things are going to come because Mother Nature is going to give us reaction for harming her children. Hmm? In God's eyes, an end is as dear to him as the Prime Minister of uh, Timbuktu, let's say. Hmm? In God's eyes, every living entity is a child of God. So why will he make any distinction? If we step on an end, inadvertently we may, but that is why we pray to the Lord, please I forgive me for all the inadvertent sins that I may be committing. And we chant Hare Krishna because we know that unfortunately, knowingly and unknowingly, we commit many sins and make many mistakes. But that's why devotee tries to be so careful. Vaishnav does not want to give anxiety even to an end, what to speak of another Vaishnav? Hmm? We talk so much about Vaishnav etiquette and maintenance of Vaishnav etiquette is the ornament of a devotee. <clears throat> so our dealings must become very paka. We must become very careful in our dealings with one another. We must be very kind, compassionate, not just towards the Hare Krishna because, oh, he's a devotee, she's a devotee, so I'll be nice to them but to all creation, but to everyone. And we are being watched, you know, as Hare Krishnas, whether we are the bus station, train station, airport, you know, shopping mall, standing in line, people are watching to see what the Hare Krishnas will do. So it's not enough to be on our best behavior in the temple. <laughs> and then we go out and we do whatever. At all moments, at every moment, I am nothing but a servant of Krishna. I am representing Guru and Krishna in every encounter. And therefore, it is my duty to see that I am doing my best to please Guru and Krishna in this encounter. In fact, His Holiness Bhakti Tita Swami, on the four principles of community building, he starts with this first one in which he says that treat everyone you meet as though the success of your spiritual life depends on the quality of interaction that you have with that person. Uh -huh. See how careful he wants us to be even in the smallest little interaction we may have. We may just have a very brief interaction, say in an elevator, you know, I press the button and I'm in the elevator and the person next to me says, oh, I want to get off at the next one. And I say, oh, well, I don't mind going up one floor. Sorry, I did whatever it is. A little courtesy goes a long way. We are, you know, meant to show common courtesy to one another. Hmm? This is true for all of us. It's not that I will be nice only to the Hare Krishna and to everyone else <laughs> and do whatever I like. <laughs> that's not on, you know, that's not the right thinking because Krishna wants us to be kind and compassionate towards everyone. Prahlad Maharaj, he says, that, uh, you know, for myself, I don't care. But I'm only thinking about these fools and rascals <laughs> who do not know you, dear Lord, and are suffering in the darkness of ignorance. See how compassionate Prahlad Maharaj is. Huh? Towards everyone, including his demoniac father, his demoniac teachers, his demon schoolmates. He's always trying to uplift everyone, isn't it? Even though he's being tormented and tortured, what does Prahlad do? He goes on preaching Krishna consciousness. Huh? So what a wonderful example we have in our scriptures of little Prahlad, little Dhruva Maharaj, Yudhishthir Maharaj, Parikshit Maharaj. Parikshit Maharaj was cursed to die. He didn't deserve that punishment. It was a small transgression. But how did he accept it? With grace. And knowing that the Supreme Lord has arranged this to bring me back to him. So I will accept it. I will not counter curse. He could have, but he did not. Hmm? So we have such great examples in our scriptures of saintly rulers, saintly leaders, saintly people to guide and help us in our day-to-day -day life, in our own Krishna consciousness. Of course, we are not so big. We are just small little ants here in Krishna consciousness. But we also have our challenges. We also have our difficulties. And that is why we have the association of devotees to guide us and help us to move forward in our Krishna consciousness nicely so that we are making progress towards the goal of the human form of life, becoming Krishna conscious. So I hope that I have covered all the different points that I was trying to say about the environment, about saintly rule, about how that matters to us, what examples we need to set, and how cooperation between man and God 
man and nature actually makes for healthy living, happy living, and progressive, peaceful society. Thank you all very much. Hare Krishna. So we can now open up. For, okay, Vishal Prabhu, our book distributor. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to our Gurudev. Hare Krishna. I don't know. I don't know where you see book distribution. Uh, I'm just kind of. I'm just kind of uh, uh, being uh, uh, nonsense to the streets. <laughs> I, I was don't just kind of guy. All right, shoot your questions. I have actually. I would like to. Uh, yeah, I would just like to share with you a few things uh, on these points. Um, I was just kind of group actually now because in Sankirtan we met so much, so many young people. So we just try to see which of those young people are uh, open for discussion, sharing some experience. You meet really uh, like amazing, you know, yogis, past lives, uh, mystics, and, you know, just stuck here in the material world again. <laughs> and then they, I just actually made a group, made a group, it's called Gita Master Group, and we are going to some points from Gita with them, trying to inspire them to chant, um, yeah, chant, take the process and be devotees, you know, so it's really cool. Studying the Gita, especially doing Sankirtan, oh, wow, man, if you really want to study Gita, do Sankirtan, and then you will, Gita will open up for you. It's just amazing how it functions. And one point about this government and how we try to, um, how we try to get benefits for the society how we try to get opulence and you know peaceful life and all of these things i just want to share one thing that i noticed while reading bhagavad gita that it's constantly shoprapa is speaking that we have to do some sacrifice for lord vishnu for krishna we have to give some sacrifice to get material uh you know to be to get nice material life this is actually what people are not understanding. I always thinking that you were in the conference, you know, people are, you know, peace in the world, you know, and all of these things. But the question is, are they ready to kind of, a, the only way there is peace, there will be prosperity, there will be any, uh, you know, no climate change and no, no anything of that disasters. If everything what we are do will be as a sacrifice to the Lord, this is the only way. This is why Vanashram system is made. Vanashram system is made so that any Varna and any Ashram, whatever they are doing, they are dedicating it first to the Lord. And that's why they had, you know, that's why they have opulence. That's why they have nice situated uh, material life. And also they have a, a basis for spiritual life. So this is, I guess, what Shri Prabhupada wanted to establish and what we are trying to establish is like, are we really using everything for the Lord's service? I mean, at least we are Vaishnavas, right? We are Vaishnavas and we are trying to, to, to I was just thinking like, how much am I using all my things for Krishna service, you know, for Vishnu service? And even, even Shudra then in Vedic times were using everything for the Lord's service somehow, you know, unconsciously. You know, they had to do some yagyas, some, you know, offerings or something. So I just wanted to kind of add, add on to your comments of, you know, and stop eating meats. Uh, and I guess that, I guess overall, if we just do everything for the sacrifice of Lord Krishna or Vishnu or however they want God, you know, Supreme Personality of God, this is what I usually say, <laughs> you know, Supreme Personality, Supreme uh, that all of this comes then all together, you know, the meat eating, the, the regulation, the, you know, the all lifestyle comes with it. So any comments? Well, it's certainly true that when we please the Lord, uh, he takes care of his devotees, but it's not always that he will bless us with material opulence. It's not always the case. You know, it's, uh, you know, devotees may sometimes suffer with a lot of difficulties for a very long time in spite of being faithful and continuing devotional service 10, 15, 20, 30 years. And Krishna may not give you what you want. So it's not always true or rather that's not really what the devotee is aiming for that i will sacrifice i will do something for vishnu and then i will be materially opulent because that may not always happen 
Mm. Because that is like karma yoga, you know. I will do something, but I want a return. You know, it's like fruit right. of activity, right. but it is like karma yoga. But we want to reach bhakti yoga where, okay, my Lord, whatever you do, I'm still your servant because that is my natural position. I, you may keep me in poverty, you may elevate me to a very high position, you may leave me somewhere in between, you may give me even more difficulties, whatever you do, I cannot leave you because who else is there whom I can serve other than you? Of course, even if one wants material benedictions, still one is encouraged to serve the Lord. Akama sarva kamo va, moksha kama udharadi, tivrena bhakti yogina, yajeta purusham param. So I remember one young man many years ago when I had just joined, he really wanted to get married, he really wanted to find a nice wife. I said, oh, well, pray to Krishna, pray to Krishna that you get a nice wife. What is wrong with that? Because who else will you going to ask? Say, I want something. Who else will I ask? I will only ask Krishna. And Krishna may either give us a nice wife or husband or whatever, it, car, house, job, this, that, or he may not. But still, whatever Krishna does is for our good. Sometimes you feel disappointed, isn't it? Oh, Krishna, I so much wanted that raise. Oh, I so much wanted that bonus. Oh, I so much wanted, you know, to be the top, uh, you know, GBC leader. And look, here I am, a nobody. Or oh, whatever it is, we may be having such Give ideas. You know? Yeah, or I must, I must be the most, most, whatever it is. Srila Prabhupada said, you are not the most everything. When Jai Patakumara was saying, I'm the most fallen, I'm the most ignorant. I'm the, he said, you are not the most anything. <laughs> <laughs> so we may want all different things because you know we are conditioned souls and we hanker this is our problem in this material world we are hankering for something or we are lamenting because we don't have something hankering for something lamenting hankering lamenting hankering lamenting hankering lamenting this goes on why because we are attached because we are still attached to the material energy because we are still trying to get something we are not free of that fruitive mentality. So don't worry, it takes time, but eventually we will come to see how loving and faithful Krishna is and we may not get what we want. We may even lose something. We may lose our health. We may lose our relationship. We may lose a marriage or two. We may lose our finances. We may lose our position. We may not get the name, fame, distinction we want, but we will see that we have grown in our Krishna consciousness. As long as we try stay true, as long as we stay sincerely and seriously following the order of the Guru, Krishna will protect our spiritual life. We will grow in that area. And that is the most important thing. Because remember, what you gain on the inside, nobody can take away from you. Those riches, that wealth, nobody can take from you. You see? So Krishna... He comes and cleanses, personally he comes and he cleanses the heart of all kinds of attachments and desires and this thing and that thing. And he frees us from this entanglement of this material world. And we are tormented, isn't it? When we want something, how much we are tormented by that thought? I want, I want, I want. And when we don't get it, how upset we become. I'm speaking of myself personally. And then we realize well, if we get it. Me. Yeah, well, if we get it, then we start thinking, oh, now how can I use it to get more? That is another further thing. So, if we are more surrendered and we say, Krishna, whatever you desire, which is best for me, let that happen. Bhakti Tita Maharaj had this prayer, you know, he would pray like this. He would say, whatever is needed to help me enhance my spiritual life and enhance my service to Srila Prabhupada, dear Lord, please bring it on. And whatever is needed to be taken away so that I can enhance my spiritual serv my service to my spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, let it be taken away. Now, that is a very surrendered situation. We will not be able to say that prayer honestly where we are right now. But this just gives you an indication of where we need to be headed because our greatest wealth is our Krishna consciousness. That's our, in our eternal bank account. Nobody can take that away from us. So we need to build up our intern, eternal spiritual bank account more than anything else in the world. That is the only thing we are going to take with us to the next life. You see? So that's like just I, I, will, I was like, I was, th I was thinking that we can also, because actually it is, it is a fact 
if the world wants opulence, the true Krishna consciousness, they will get the opulence as well and get purified as well. I mean, it's not, it's, it's not like, you know, we just promise only spiritual growth. Actually, we, we, one ashram system is, uh, you know, they, they are uh, promising both. They're promising both spiritual growth and material uh, stability as well. Of course, it's mm-hmm. nothing Vaishnavas. Uh, we, in some part of our lives, we should and we are, uh, you know, going only for the pure bhakti. So, so I think it's like just a valuable our kind of argument that, yes, Krishna consciousness can save the world, not only, you know, elevating everyone to a spiritual level, but also the way, the only way how to have, a, you know, stable material life as well. True, definitely that we want our families, our whole society to prosper in all ways. We don't want people to suffer, you know, unduly from poverty or disease or difficulties or challenges. We want everyone to progress nicely in their own Krishna consciousness. But again, we are not like the Christians, you know, dear Lord, give me my daily bread. As Srila Prabhupada says, we don't go to God and beg for bread. Instead, in our religion, we ask God, God, what do you want to eat? (laughs) <laughs> Srila Prabhupada said like that, you know, we don't worry about that because God provides, he provides for an ant, he provides for an elephant, so we are not worried about that, God will provide, we know that, God is, Srila Prabhupada said, Krishna is not an ungrateful man, Krishna will give you all that you need, he is not an ungrateful man, so Krishna becomes very happy actually with a devotee who is trying in their own humble way to uh, further the mission. What is Krishna's mission? He wants to bring us back to him. So anyone who is working to fulfill that desire of the Lord becomes very dear to the Lord. And he automatically takes care of his devotees. Krishna takes care of his devotees. So devotees don't have to worry so much about how will my needs be met? What's going to happen to me? Of course, we don't become passive or fatalistic or just lazy or just sit back and say Krishna will do everything. We do our part. Hmm? We do our part. And then Krishna takes care of the rest. Hmm. So yes, Varnashram system is there for peaceful progression of all classes of society. But now having come to Bhakti Yoga, we understand Bhakti Yoga is the highest. Do you think that in Varnashram, when we set up Varnashrams in the farms or any other way, that we are going to, you know, we'll, I don't know, I guess this is something in the future, it will kind of show it by itself. Will we going to present Bhakti Yoga like in these both aspects, you know, material and spiritual, and when people come to kind of a start, when they get purified, when they are able to understand these deep spiritual aspects to kind of start to shift them towards what you said, like, you know, you actually don't have to think about material so much. You know, I'm just thinking like, you know, how to do this, uh, this direct, but it, it is a, it's like an, a, it's kind of a, a mixed bhakti preaching. It's not even, it's not even bridge preaching because you are directly speaking about bhakti, about, you know, surrender to the Lord. And I'm just thinking about it because I'm trying something similar now. So I'm just kind of a tr- trying to understand how not to deviate from the teachings, how not to kind of mislead people, how to kind of bring them as, as quick as possible to reading Shri Prabhupada's books, chanting 60 rounds, following four regulative principles, because this is the only thing that will, you know, only thing that they will be able to experience spiritual life. Otherwise, they can be like, you know, in the, in the bridge preaching program for many years and they didn't even, you know, they didn't start anything. They just like the, I don't know, just like yeah, losing I- time. And Srila Prabhupada did say this. He said that if Krishna consciousness is so easy, why are so many people falling away? He was very concerned. And therefore, he said this Varnashram must be established so that people can gradually take to the process of Krishna consciousness, slowly elevate themselves, you know, through the progress of Varnashram. They can come higher, 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 higher. But for that, the basics have to be still there. They have to still follow the four regulative principles. They have to still chant and they have to still be agreeable that all the activities should be geared to pleasing the Lord. That much basic uh, requirement is there for all the four classes of society, whether one is a Brahmana, Vaishya, Shudra, Kshatriya, and so on. But common people at large, they don't know what is Krishna, what is Krishna consciousness. So they will come flocking to us. Prabhupada said thousands of people will be coming to us flocking 
looking for livelihood looking for a place to eat looking for a place to sleep because they will have lost their homes there and this is happening this is actually happening in the um, where i was in the us it's a very hurricane prone zone and people who had beautiful homes in posh localities suddenly overnight they had lost their homes and they were standing in lines for food hmm so material nature is so cruel within moments within a day everything can change uh so such people where they will go what they will do eventually thousands of such people will come looking to us for answers at that time we must have our farm communities up and running so that at least we can give them a place to stay at least we can offer them shelter food clothing and slowly as they take part in the different activities of krishna consciousness maybe some of them will actually you know accept the philosophy but even if they don't at least they have begun the journey jai okay, please do do that <laughs> jai yeah, thank you mother hari krishna thank you very beautiful questions very thoughtful questions i can see how concerned you are to bring so many people under this great umbrella of krishna consciousness and that is so beautiful to see prabhu please keep up this uh, zeal and uh, fervor you have to give the great good fortune that you have received to others this is so pleasing to krishna thank you thank you very much <laughs> people are so eager for this knowledge uh the 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 because you know they say the madhya adhikaris they kind of uh, uh, that we when this show proper said we have to come to madhya adhikari to start to recognize envious people which you don't preach to them you just kind of leave them alone but you will material life going to you know, preach to them uh and try to find the uh, uh, the what's the name the the one who are uh not how do you say those those that are just uh, ignorant they are they are uh, they are ignorant because they don't know better innocent huh? innocent yes we have to find the innocent and we have to give them the knowledge they are the one that's going to grasp this knowledge and they just need to hear from from us about this the yes. yes. literally you just start speaking and they're like tell me more it's like where do i find more that's it yes give them a book save their life wonderful Yes, even even in in the sacred and it's so so like you know you come to someone it's like you know you see it's like a young person open like oh like hello like oh no I'm not interested why not you know this 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 reasons this reasons this reasons oh okay give me a book then it's like it's like it just you know it just kept just in that moment like no you should know this take this and it's like oh okay nice wow wow thank you thank you for the conversation yeah it's like Yeah that's that's why I'm out outside trying to find <laughs> trying to find it so yeah it's it's like yeah, I think I think we are too much scared but you should be like lions you know <laughs> you know just yes. you are scared you of enemies be like a lion on the preaching field and be like a lamb at home the trouble will be like a lion at home and lamb outside <laughs> <laughs> I think because we are afraid of the envious people you know because the envious people are you know that ones like you know kind of insulting you they are kind of agree and mean to you and everything but you know we just kind of okay envious 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 oh look you <laughs> you come here you have it done for you you know it's like yeah and most of people are envious like really it's like i just even don't bother anymore it's like you know just you're just counting it envious 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 <laughs> just until you find the innocent oh innocent hello hello mr innocent <laughs> here is for you a book like and yes. it's really cool it's really cool the filtering right. you know right 100 people and one person might take a book yeah that is true prabhupad said 100 times they will reject and then you will find one person taking a book that's that's just the life of a book distributor every day you find five of those hmm you know in a week you find five of those that you stay in contact in one month you have 20 new 20 new aspiring devotees Right. You never know. You never know how things will turn out. You know. This is a lot. Then in the in the temple, you just need one more person. It changes the whole energy. You don't need like you know hundreds of people in the Brahmacharya Ashram. You just need like few more like sincere people, and that's already enough. You know, we we think you have to be like you know we have to be a movement of million people. No, let's be like 
movement of like thousands of innocent, like uh, sincere and, and strong people, that's enough. And you've conquered the yes, world. Yes, Srila Prabhupada said, we don't need many stars. One moon is enough. Yeah, yeah, that's why I see the Brahmacharya Yasha just having one more additional person, you know, changes everything, you know, and then just one more, you already have like, you know, an additional spirit preaching field, you know, opening up. It's you just, you know, Janaki Nath, how many thousands of people he impacted? One Janaki Nath, huh? so young, yeah. only 36 years old, humble, simple, sweet little Brahmachari. And thousands of people's lives change because of this one sweet, sincere, effulgent, surrendered devotee called Janaki Nath. Huh? One moon is enough, isn't it? So we have such a wonderful God Brother's example. Janaki Nath Prabhu's life is exemplary. And, you know, having cancer and having to face so many surgeries and having to stick chemotherapy and radiation and tablets and 30 tablets in a day and so many things but he never ever gave up on Krishna consciousness he never gave up on that zeal that missionary zeal almost that no somehow or the other I have to give Krishna consciousness to others even though he was so sick himself he was still intent on giving Krishna to others what a great spiritual warrior we have right here in our God family you know to emulate in our own small, little, humble way, we can try to follow in his footsteps. And you personally took care of him. You personally got so much mercy and you got so much good fortune to be right there and uh, personally attend on him and take care of him. So how fortunate you are that Krishna chose you to be there and to receive all that wonderful... He was, he was, he was he was taking care of me, that, that's for sure. <laughs> like, yes, you know, he was doing his bed bed and he... And he's still, ta and he's still taking care of you. <laughs> like he was on his bed bed and he's like, you know, thinking how can he help me in my spiritual life, you know, and it's like... Yeah. Amazing. I'm just thinking like, I, I'm a nonsense. Yeah. I'm a nuisance Such there, a, you know. <laughs> Such a wonderful uh, personality. And he was a qualified, actually, he was... Uh, because I was like, you know, these uh, talks that Maharaj had after his departure, so many about you, about him. And it's like, he was so qualified already by birth. And he was actually, when he got initiated, he, uh, Maharaj then, he said like, you are like, you're my first qualified disciple. So he was already qualified. Hmm. Yeah, he came in, you know, just to finish up some little karma and go back to the spiritual world. He was already very, very gifted personality and very pure. He was very pure. He was very pure in his heart, totally non-envious. Everyone could see how pure he was. He was totally non-envious. And he had absolutely no attraction for, you know, trying to put out some Mataji and trying to get, you know, a good name for himself here and there. No, all he was interested was in giving his best to others. He didn't want anything from anyone. That was very special. Okay. Well, you know what's funny is that yeah. every time you put a garland on his picture, he takes it off. <laughs> Did you notice that? Every time you put a garland on his picture, he takes it off? Yes, you notice that. No. Now, now you put, now it's like it's already like last three times. Uh, you know, you put a garland on his picture and it just falls off. <laughs> and when oh, Maharaj yes. says he doesn't like garlands, and he always takes no. it off. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Are there any other questions, comments? Me and uh, dear Risha Prabhu have been having a nice discussion, but if there are any other comments, you want to share your own realizations, your own um, experiences in Krishna consciousness, please enlighten us. Please share with us. Okay, looks like there aren't any more questions or comments. So I watch you. TV. I watch TV. Thank you very much for another. Thank you for another wonderful lecture. Uplifting. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Tita Kitty, for being there. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Okay, dear devotees, if there are no more questions, comments, realizations, with your permission, we will end this call. Is that all right? That is all right. Okay. Thank you all so very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you.